Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, Ramadan Kareem to everyone, and thank you very much for being here. Uh, I would like to start by thanking the organizers uh, of this Pioneer Series. I've been attending it since last year. I have to say it's extremely fruitful and beneficial, and it's an honor to be here and to participate as a speaker in this session. Um, today we'll talk about space, but we'll try to talk about it in a different way. Uh, we'll talk about why us as humans go to space, how has space directly or indirectly affected our lives? And how the future of the space sector is contributing to the future of humanity? Um, I'm going to try not to spend too much time. Sometimes I get too comfortable and I tend to go long in my presentations. So we'll try to keep it short so that we can go to the other room and have a sit down and chat and have more of a discussion rather than just a presentation that you guys listen to. Uh, so this way we have more of like a, a group discussion and hopefully more beneficial for all of you. So, off-roading. How many of you guys likes off-roading? Okay, good number. I know you do like off-roading a lot. <laughs> Said likes it. Yeah. yeah. He almost, almost launched me to space a few times, but we were fine. <laughs> we stayed safe. So, when we talk about a car, if you're going to go off-roading, you're going to go somewhere from point A to point Z in the desert, or in a rocky train. What kind of a car you'd need? What are the requirements? Four wheels, Four that's the first one. Okay, what else determines how well you can reach your destination or the plan you put ahead? And it's fully equipped. With? Safety, safety. Okay, Hamid? Notification that can support you to reach the point that you want. What are the core stuff? Engine power. Engine power, okay. Suspension. Suspension. Tires. Okay, gearbox. Okay. If I take, let's say for example, uh, a Mini Cooper. Will I be able to off-road with a Mini Cooper in the desert? Yeah. Off-road. Yeah. What's, what's the percentage of, success, of, of succeeding? No. Zero. Almost zero. <laughs> Very low. Very low, exactly. Exactly. Why? Because a Mini Cooper was not designed to actually be driven in a desert. But a Land Cruiser, or of course a Defender, is made for that. If you look at, for example, the electrical cars. Can I take Tesla off-roading for a proper off-roading? No. Why? Okay. Not yet. Okay. Not yet. Remember that, huh? Okay. What, what is the main reason? It's not designed for that purpose. Why? What's, what limits it? The power uh, source, I think. Power is part of it, yes. Height also, because of the drag and all that stuff. Because of the higher you go, the more power you need. So, yes. Exactly. But would you believe me if I tell you actually a Mini Cooper was able to actually... Okay, this is too loud. Sorry, guys. Will you guys believe me if I told you actually a Mini Cooper was able to actually climb a mountain that is more than 824 meters in height? Something that's even bigger than Eiffel Tower? Possible. Possible? Yes, it happened. In that Mini Cooper that did that was actually the Curiosity Rover. The one that was sent by NASA to explore Mars. It's the size of a Mini Cooper. It's been working for a very long time, since 2011. 12, sorry. It was launched, launched in 2011. And it has been going up a train that's more than 824 meters. It's quite high. It doesn't have the features of a Defender or a Jeep. And the funny thing, a lot of the technology that was used in this one, was, uh, in this rover, was actually even used in the previous rover, the Opportunity rover. The same technologies that are being used in Tesla nowadays, but that was used 
an opportunity more than 10 years ago. So the point I'm trying to get to here, and by the way, for your information, Mount Everest is about 8,800 8, meters in height. The highest point, that's the highest point on Earth. The highest point on Mars is the Olympus moons, which is almost two and a half times bigger than Mount Everest, just for information. That tells you how difficult that is. So if a Mini Cooper is able to actually climb one of the mountains on Mars, which is more harsh than Earth, then I'm sure we can make a Mini Cooper go do a proper off-roading here on Earth. <laughs> So the thing I want us to focus on and think about here is that there's a lot of knowledge that's been generated from space missions over the past 50, 60 years. A lot of that knowledge was utilized to benefit humanity, directly and indirectly. The cloth we wear, the pen we use, the paper we use, the technologies we use in our cell phones, the healthcare systems that we have, treatment, food security, water security, technology, and things like this, space has directly, or even indirectly in some cases, contributed to these technologies. Having said that, we have not utilized all the, of the knowledge that we have to benefit humanity yet. And this is just an example. It took us more than 10 to 15 years to utilize technologies that's used on a rover or Mars on a, car called Tesla, on a car called Tesla. But it took someone who thinks out of the box, who's a thought leader, who thinks about the future, to actually be able to do that. And that's Elon Musk. Regardless of what you think of him, you agree or disagree with what he does or, or what he says, but he made it happen. Now we see Tesla in every single part of the world. So. The future, I don't think, will be just limited to who is able to come up with new knowledge and take advantage of that knowledge. I think the future will also be focused on who is able to go back and look at all the knowledge that was generated and what was not utilized, which is a lot. And that's where innovation, creativity, creativity come into place. Why? It's always cheaper to go back and utilize the knowledge that's been generated than to go and try to come up with new knowledge and new discoveries and pump money into it. So the smart ones are the ones who know how to utilize that. Same thing with iPhones. That's what's happening. That's what they did. The moment they shifted that model of trying to do everything from A to Z to actually just designing and then utilizing the existing technologies. They even have Samsung parts in here. You know. That's when they started doing very well business-wise. Um, so this is why nations in general go to space. There are many different reasons. Each nation has its own reason. But the novel cause of trying to generate knowledge, trying to serve humanity, trying to come up with things that might be utilized today or in the future are the core, one of the core reasons that any nation goes to space in general. Some have more sort of focus on defense and military. Uh, goals. Some are more focused on serving humanity and some are using it as more uh, as a tool or a catalyst or a mean to cause disruptive change or significant development in their nations. In the case of the UAE, for example, the Emirates Mars mission, who knows about the Emirates Mars mission? Okay. So can you tell me what's the mission about? It's a by Shepard behind the Maktoum and the plan is to send back uh, uh, it's, I don't know what they call it in the scientific way, it's like a satellite to discover, it could be like the, uh, to discover the, uh, the airspace which is surrounding uh, Mars and... The atmosphere, correct. Yes, the atmosphere. So the Emirates Mars mission and the spacecraft is called the Hope Probe. The reason why Sheikh Ahmed announced and Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed announced it, there's many reasons. There's one or there's a bunch that are related to the UAE, but there's also a bunch that are related to the region. But the Emirates Mars mission is not a space sector mission. It's a nationwide mission. Emirati youth to go into sciences, 
Because before that, they had very limited career path, the scientists. The engineers had a career path. The country has invested a lot in this area. But the scientists either taught in schools or few labs here and there. That's it. No career path. So they wanted to change that. Why? Because we always talk about the post-oil economy. We talk about a knowledge-based economy, a competitive economy. You cannot have a competitive economy without creativity and innovation. And to have creativity and innovation, you need to have a science, a very advanced science and technology sector established in your country. Why? Scientists are the ones who come up with the new knowledge, new discoveries, and the engineers who are the, they are the ones who convert this knowledge into products. They complement each other. So His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed and His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid determined the need, the importance of having scientists in the UAE and to create a career path for that, for them in, in, in that case. So the best way was for, for them to do that, to, that th to do it through a space program. Why? True. To build a space mission, you need to have a person who studied, from the engineering point of view, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, software engineering. But also you need a person who studied math, chemistry, and physics. So you have the scientists and the engineers working together on delivering a mission. And the best mission to do that is a scientific mission. And the best way to actually push them out of the comfort zone is to make them go to Mars. That's why we skipped moon and went to Mars. <laughs> so His Highness, when he first met the team, he gave us his requirements. He said that was after the launch of Dubai Sat 2, which was the second Earth observation satellite for the UAE, which I was part of the team that worked on it. But we were focused on Earth at that time. But again, it didn't create that sort of that disruptive kind of an impact that will encourage people to go into sciences. So that's why His Highness thought about, okay, we need to go to Mars. We need to have something that's purely scientific. And he told us, you're going to build it, you're not going to buy it. You can work with others, you can do know-how transfer. And that's how we started in our Earth observation missions. Don't start from scratch. Start where others ended and learn from them. That's fine. And he said, that was, at that time it was 2014, at uh, 2013, end of it. Why? Because the 2nd of December 2021 is the 50th anniversary of the establishment of the UAE. And I'm going to come back to this point why he wanted to speak about it. Why, why, why is that date very important? For other reasons. And he said, the science has to be unique. You cannot do something that's done before. You can build on what others did, but it has to be unique. Going back to the 2nd of December 2021, that comes to a bigger goal that the UAE government had behind this mission for the region. You're talking about the region that has more than 100 million youth in it. 100 million youth with a lot of potential, with a lot of skills. You don't utilize them, they'll either leave the region which we saw happening recently, does not help the region in moving forward. Or they join the wrong, wrong groups, which we also saw happening, and utilize their skills in the wrong way. So the message of the UAE government to the Arab youth is that you come from a region that more than 800 years ago was a generator of knowledge, was a symbol of tolerance, was an example, an excellent example of how to build a civilization. People from different backgrounds, different faiths, lived together and built this region. They generated knowledge. The moment you moved away from that, the whole area turned into a chaos. The moment you started looking at the differences, the region collapsed. So this mission is that if the UAE, a country that's more, less than 50 years old, is able to reach Mars in less than 50 years, through international collaboration, through being a new model for the whole humanity about how people from different parts of the world, more than 200 nationalities living here, coexisting together, working together, building this nation in less than 50 years, the new Arabs can do much more than that. And that tolerance, accepting others, and being open-minded, 
and being flexible is a core for that. So this is one of the main reasons why. So the UAE is using space as a tool to build its economy, stimulate its economy, build its academic and research capability. We come from a merchant culture in this region, especially in Dubai. We're merchants. We buy and sell. But we need to change that a little bit. We need to build. Our whole economy depends on technology. And we are excellent in driving innovation. We do drive innovation in aerospace sectors. We do drive innovation in IT sector and so on. But it's not done here. And His Highness wanted to change that. Part of that had to happen here. So it uses space as a meme to change even the culture or make the culture slightly evolve. So this is how space is affecting us on Earth, not just in the products that we have, the way we live, how diplom diplomacy is done, bring people from different cultures closer with each other. And today, in the Amherst Mars mission, we've reached a point in we have, which we have completed the development of the spacecraft and the instruments. We are in the testing phase currently. Hopefully, and it will be ready a year from now to be launched in July or summer of 2020, to be more general, because you never know, things shift here and there. And the journey will take seven months, and, for, and hopefully we'll reach in the early, uh, or the first quarter of 2021, which will give us enough time to turn on these instruments, collect some scientific data, and hopefully come up with new discoveries before the 2nd of December 2021, and share the data with the whole world with the scientists from different parts of the world. They're already part of the mission, already working with them. Um, so this is why UAE is going to Mars. And this is one example why humanity is going to Mars and how space actually serves human, humanity. So it's not just about the products, it's not just about reaching there and saying that we reached there, no. It's about causing disruptive change. For the UAE, it's about its food and water security it's about its energy security. It's about it's competitive in the region, given that there's a lot of regional uh, competition happening recently. So it's about survival. Exactly. Space is about survival. You can if you can survive space, you can definitely survive Earth. Exactly. If you can feed a human on in space, you can definitely feed humans on Earth. If you can fix the water problem in space, then you can definitely fix the water problem on, on Earth. So thank you very much. Uh, this was just a brief of my talk, and I would like to suggest that we go maybe to the next uh, room to so have a discussion. To the yep. the so we can have the Q&A there and all that.